So how do you do that? How can you influence somebody in their subconscious mind? By something that I call the A, B, C, D, E of your professional imprint. When I walked on stage, the first thing that you saw was my appearance, the way we look. Like it or not, we are visual creatures. Our brains don't like to work. That's why they take a shortcut through our eyes. And it starts with the suit you are born in, your body. Are you tall? Are you short? Are you overweight? Are you underweight? Does it look healthy and in shape? And then hopefully, you cover it with clothes. <laughs> what do they say about you? The style, the fit, the colors, the quality, the brand, your hair, your accessories, your shoes, your makeup, your skin, the entire visual picture that you create. 90% of information gets transmitted in our brain in a visual way. Even my body language right now is something you transmit in your brain visually. Or sometimes when we have somebody on the phone and all we know is their voice, we do think that we know how they look like. Your appearance matters. But to be very clear, looking good is great, but it's not enough. Because at one point, you are going to behave, your behavior. First and foremost, your attitude. Your attitude speaks louder than any words, and it speaks before you even open your mouth. Do you approach situations with a positive or a negative attitude? And there is only one person who can make that choice, and that is you. Do you have charisma when you walk into a room? Do people instantly know that you are there? How about your morals and your ethics? The choices that you make, especially if nobody is watching. And how about your diplomacy and courtesy? Or back then, 10 years ago, we called it etiquette. Do you shake hands? Do you look somebody in the eyes? Or are you on your phone? Did you let a person this morning walk out the elevator first or last? Did you sit down first or last at your table? For you, those are just micro moments. But to them, it might actually matter in that moment and might be a big deal. And then at one point, you're going to communicate, the C for communication. But before you speak, the most important part about communication is actually listening. How good of a listener are you? And then what does your body speak to others? The way you carry it around, your body language, your facial expressions. And then your voice. Your voice is a very powerful tool. It's like an instrument that you play every single day. And none of us ever learns how to play that instrument. We just use it. The sound, the volume, the pace, your language palette. Do you have an accent or a dialect? We all have one. And how about your written communication? Which brings me to the D, which very often is the most surprising point for people, because most of the first impressions you make out of those 3,000 per day, you actually don't make in person. You make it in some sort of digital way. The emails that you send out, that get forwarded and forwarded and forwarded and forwarded, and you don't even know where they ended up. Right now, somebody could decide if they are going to call you for their next event or not, based on an email that wasn't even meant for them. And how about your social media profiles? What would I find about you when I search your name on Facebook? And don't tell me, well, that is private, that has nothing to do with me as a professional. If there are two things that don't belong together, it's the internet and private. <laughs> and how about your virtual meetings? How do I experience you there? What do I see? What do I hear? What is in your background? The entire digital footprint that you leave behind consciously, but also unconsciously. How long are you off online? How often are you online? How often do you post? We all have that one friend on our Facebook feed where we wonder, does he or she even have a job, or are they just online all the time? It's the digital footprint that you leave behind in between the lines. And then there is your environment, the living and non-living things that you surround yourself. First and foremost, your family, your friends, your network. What do they say about you? You know, you cannot hang out with the Kardashians, but want to be perceived as the Pope? Your car, your home, where do you go on vacation? They take this entire information to create some sort of opinion about you. And the first moments they experience you. 